and gentlemen, welcome. Today is my distinct pleasure to introduce a man who is recognized... The battle of evolution is only one skirmish in a much larger war. Science simply makes no use of the hypothesis of God. Ask yourself, what is intelligent design given us? Nothing. We cannot accept intelligent design as an alternative scientific theory. They will never accept that we have a better argument. They just pester us and they waste our time. Ben is speaking on the topic that has become increasingly important to him over recent years. While Ben has always been an ardent supporter of science, lately he has noticed an alarming trend in the scientific establishment that could have dire consequences for every American. Without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome for Mr. Ben Stein. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, gangsters. Thank you very, very much. Freedom is the essence of America. We're talking about freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom from fear, freedom of religion. Martin Luther King said, America is essentially a dream. And he said, it is a dream of freedom and equality. And freedom is the way to equality. And America simply would not be America without freedom. In every turning point in our history, the decision has always been about freedom. Freedom is what makes this country great. Freedom has allowed us to create, to explore, to overcome every challenge we have faced as a nation. But imagine if these freedoms were taken away. Where would we be? What would we lose? Well, unfortunately, I no longer need to imagine. It's happening. We are losing our freedom in one of the most important sectors of society, science. I have always assumed that scientists were free to ask any question, to pursue any line of inquiry without fear of reprisal. But recently, I've been alarmed to discover that this is not the case. It all began when I met evolutionary biologist Richard Sternberg in Washington, D.C. His life was nearly ruined when he strayed from the party line while serving as editor of a scientific journal affiliated with the prestigious Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Your office was over there? That's correct. This here is the West Wing. Directly ahead of us is the West Wing of the Natural History Museum. So now you're not there anymore because you're a bad boy. No, I'm not. No, I was, I was exiled. You're a bad boy. You question the powers that be. What was Dr. Sternberg's crime? He dared to publish an article by Dr. Stephen Meyer one of the leading lights of the intelligent design movement. The paper ignited a firestorm of controversy merely because it suggested intelligent design might be able to explain how life began. As a result, Dr. Sternberg lost his office, his political and religious beliefs were investigated, and he was pressured to resign. The questioning of Darwinism was, was a, a bridge too far for many. The, mentioning of intelligent design that occurs at the end of the paper was, was over the top. And I think the intelligent design proponents have raised a number of very important questions. And you wanted to get those questions brought up and discussed. Placed on, placed on the table. Placed on the table. People were so upset about it. They were so upset that you could see their, they had a physical emotional reaction. Wow. They were saying that Stephen C. Meyer is a well-known Christian, that Stephen C. Meyer is an intelligent design proponent, that Stephen C. Meyer is a Republican. It was all couched in terms of religion, politics, and sociology. The way the chair of the department um, uh, put it is that I was viewed as an intellectual terrorist. Terrorist. Because of giving the topic of intelligent design some modicum of credibility. 
What happened to Dr. Sternberg was terrible, but surely it was just an isolated case. I was still pretty skeptical, so naturally, I checked in with the head of the Skeptic Society, Michael Shermer. So I can't prove there is no God or Yahweh in your case, any more than I can prove there is no Isis, Zeus, Apollo, Brahma, Ganesha, Mithras, Allah, or for that matter, the flying spaghetti monster. And, and think about just one thing. Why would the aliens look like this? Well, that's, these, these are who bipedal. Drew that? Who drew that? Skepticism, uh, it's not a position you take. It's just an approach to claims. So this one is called the borderlands of science, yeah. where sense meets nonsense. Is intelligent design nonsense? Well, it's unproven. So in that sense, it's nonsense. So I would put it in the, in the sort of shaded areas between good, solid science and total nonsense. You know, it's sort of three quarters of the way toward the nonsense side. But you think, nevertheless, people should be allowed to speak about it and publish papers about it? They are free to write and publish and be heard in public forums and go to conferences just like everybody else does. Well, what if a person published something, say, at the Smithsonian uh, in favor of intelligent design and then lost his job over it? And it had been peer-reviewed, it had been peer-reviewed, and published, and then he lost his job over it anyway. What would happen? What do you well, think about that situation? I, I think that particular situation, there was something else going on. What that, was that, going on? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, because I don't know. But I, uh, I think there was had to be something. People don't get fired over something like that. You roll up your sleeves, you get to work, you do the research, you get your grants, you get you get your data, you publish, and you work your butt off, and that's how you get your theories taught. Well, but wait a minute. What if you try and try and roll up your sleeves and go to work and work your butt off? And they say, well, we're going to fire you if you even mention the word intelligent design. Mm, I don't class. think that's happening. Where is that happening? George Mason University. Throughout its 50-year history, our mission has remained clear to prepare a diverse population of students to think and to grow in a climate of unbridled academic freedom.